Welcome to another crown molding LED lighting video. Today we're going to talk about magnetic transformers that operate LED lighting systems. Now I, I would suggest anybody to use 24 volt over 12 volt. 24 volt will give you longer runs with your strip lights and your, you can get more power out to your lights. Uh, 12 volt is good for RVs, campers, anywhere you have a 12 volt system and maybe a 12 volt battery operating it. So 24 volt is the best way to go for residential or commercial use. So they make the power supplies, they make a 20 watt, there's, there's 40 watt, there's 60 watts, 75, 100, 150, 200. They just get bigger by the wattages. Now there's two main companies that manufacture and sell magnetic power supplies in the United States. One is MCOD and the other is Magnitude. Uh, they're made in Mexico or Asia. There is a few companies that I've seen on Amazon that advertise a little round button logo. It says made in the USA. It's Magnitude Power Supply. It's made in Mexico. So what I'm gonna say about these right here is, you know, there's, there's voltage differences in them and uh, we're gonna look at that in a few moments. But right now I wanna talk about the switching. This is a magnetic low voltage dimmer and you want to be sure that you see an MLV to operate with magnetic transformers. And this particular one is a Levington. It's my favorite. It will operate up to 600 watts MLV. And it's voice activated with Alexa and Google and HomeKit and Siri. So, uh, and you can program different uh, light levels and times and everything else with this right here. And then it also works as just a normal everyday lighting switch or dimmer, okay? Uh, so anyway, use that with the magnetic power supplies. Now, what if you don't care about all the whistles and bells and the voice activated and stuff like that, uh, or having it on the phone with apps, I would highly suggest you using solid power supplies. This is made by Manual, very, very good power supply. It runs very cool. The voltage is locked in at about 24.1 volts. It's very accurate. So you take this in conjunction and use it with a solid uh, electronic drive or a module. And this is wired together. And then you operate that with a RF radio frequency type switch. This is one that we sell. It's my favorite. Nice thing about this is you don't have to have any wiring going back and forth across the room. This is a radio frequency, mounts to the wall, you can put a decor cover on it, very simple to do, and it talks to the little module that's hooked to the power supply. What's nice about this, you can take it off, it's a little remote control. You can dim up, dim down, have a preset on and off. Very accurate, it works very good for long distances and through walls. So this is what I would use with the solid state drives. So now what we're going to do is look at the uh, voltage of these magnetic power supplies. You know, were they safe for your LED strips and, and how to size these out. So we're going to take a look at that now. We're going to go to our bench. We're going to look at our voltage on our meter and we're going to see what's going to happen. Okay, we're at our test bench now. And I have uh, a voltmeter set up, a 96 watt magnitude power supply, a transformer set up and a regulated power supply. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these on and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mimic the voltage from this magnitude power supply on the regulated power supply. So we can see the difference in the voltage fluctuations and see what the wattage would be uh, if this was a 24 volt power supply. Don't get me wrong, Magnitude and MCOD made some uh, very good transformers. Uh, the voltage in my book is just running too high and the, the reason for that is they're uh, trying to get enough voltage on the end of a long run of LED strips. So uh, we're gonna take uh, and start out with a power supply that might be 24 volts. And what I've done is I've connected a bunch of LED strips together to make a load of, got right at 96 right there. I'm running 24 volt, 
one one hundredths. So we're gonna call it 24 volts. And as you can see right at the bottom here, we're running 95.2 watts. So right now I'm just gonna write 24 volt over put 95 watts. 24 volt, 95 watts. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the voltage of this magnitude power supply or the transformer. I'm gonna plug it in. And then we're gonna take a look at the voltage on our voltmeter. And it's saying 2650, 26.50. So we'll write this down. 26.5 volts. So what we're going to do to copy the voltage from this power supply, we're going to raise it up to 26.5 volts. Okay, a little bit, not there. There we go. 26.5 volts. Look what happened to the wattage. 100 and 40 watts. So from 24 volt, we had a 95 watt load, and from 26.5 volts, just that other 2.5 volts more, the wattage went up to 140. That's way more than what the transformer is rated for. Actually, in reality, these transformers are rated for about 80 to 85 percent is what they're rated at, 80 to 85 percent. So this power supply should be around 80 to 85 watt load. And with that voltage on there, you are running 140 watts. Now, you think, well, what does this mean to me? Well, if you look at it a different way, I'm gonna use an example of this. Let's just say that we bought maybe four rolls of uh, 16 foot strips from Amazon, or eBay, whatever. So we have a room that may be 64 feet, okay? And the average strip light we're gonna use for argument's sake would be 1.5 watts per foot. So you multiply that, you get 96 watt load. That's what people think. And I can take this, it says 96 watt, I can run 96 watts on it. But in reality, you're not. You actually have a 140 watt load on it. So what you're doing is you're overpowering the transformer, you're making it run very hot. And another thing is, you're running your a lot of power down those strips and you're overheating them. So the hotter they get, the more resistance they build up, the more amperage or wattage grows. And it's just snowball effect a little bit. Uh, the two magnetic companies I said earlier that they build those to try to get the power out to for long runs. Now, the way to get around that is two ways. Number one is you don't buy a cheap $15 strip from Amazon or eBay or some other third company because they don't have much copper in them. They're real thin. They're not very wide. This is like a two or three ounce copper. It's like a real, that's like a Cat5 or telephone wire. Now, if you want to buy something that's going to work good, we have what they call a six ounce copper strip. You can see the difference in them. This will carry that current way to the end and keep your light really, really even. Now, I know you're asking a question. When I turn the voltage down, I'm going to lose some light. Yeah, you're right. About 5%. That's all you're going to lose. It's not even noticeable. But when you get that current down, you can get longer runs with it. Your chips are going to last a lot longer and your power supply is going to run very cool. And it's going to run more efficient and you're not overdriving it and taking a chance of burning your strips or your, your power supply up. So if you don't know what you're doing, you need to consult with someone that knows electrical or electronics and can figure that out for you. They, you need to know the voltage of your power supplies matched up with the wattage of your LED strips or, or lights that you're using. It's important to get a good, safe system for your home. Now, that's what we do at, at Crown Molding LED Lighting. We build a good system. 
We size the LED strips for your home. A, a perfect wattage for a residential lighting system is 1.5 watts per linear foot. 1.5 watts per linear foot. And that is gonna hit you right square dead on what you need to be. Now, if you're doing something commercial, you can go up to two, three watts per linear foot. But remember, every time you raise the wattage up on your strips, and it's more than you need, you're having to buy a bigger power supply. You're having to use bigger wires and you're having to, to you know, use a heavier strip. So uh, that's some things that uh, you should know. And uh, if you need that help, you're welcome to contact us at Crown Molding LED Lighting. Call us, email us. We have a quick quote page for you. We build the whole system for you. We solder the wires on the end. We, we cut them the length for you. You get the whole package. It's a, a plug and play, the blueprint. Everything goes up perfectly. And we have tech support that we can help you uh, any questions that you may have. Now, we pride ourselves on building a good system with good power supplies and wire, solder leads, connectors, and everything. We are building a power supply or transformer now, and it will be running almost dead on 24 volts. That's gonna give you your strips cooler running, and actually you're gonna get longer lengths out of it with the lower voltage. Look for the silver gray transformers. That's gonna be ours. It's gonna have LED Cosper LLC on them. They'll be available, like I say, around 4th of July. So um, contact us if we can help you at Crown Molding LED Lighting. Thank you for your time.